increase the money supply. It has, of course, horrific economic uh, consequences, horrific social consequences, uh, de-civiliz- de-civilizational consequences. You know, I, I we saw in Weimar. I, I wrote a book, which you you have said many nice things about uh, in, in print and elsewhere, called "Constitutional Chaos: What Happens When the Government Breaks Its Own Laws." The book was about the government breaking the criminal uh, laws. Uh, it, it was not about this kind of law breaking, but it never occurred to me that what the government actually is doing is a form of counterfeiting. If you or I or Peter Schiff did what the government is doing, just like if you or I or Peter Schiff knocked on the door of an AIG executive and said, give back the money or I'll reveal who you are, when that was done by Andrew Cuomo, if we did what the government does, we would expect to be indicted. Well, we'd be, we'd expect to be uh, living in the pokey. That's the, you know they put us in jail. So this is this is a criminal act. It's an act of theft. It's a it, again, it's a violation of the moral law as well as of the economic law, and it has horrific consequences. Yeah. Not only uh, higher prices, which we're beginning to see, the business cycle. We, we we are living right now in a crisis that is the result of all the inflation that took place to uh, back to bring on the ninety nine. Um, tech boom, then, of course, the housing boom, what Greenspan has done, what Mr. Bernanke is continuing. These guys really are uh, are criminals. Of course, they're on a much higher level. Therefore, we call them the honorable, and they're great you know, great guys. They have uh, high living standards. You know, the, the, the main, bow down before them. The main problem, Lou, is the public doesn't understand this. The public thinks the problem is there's not enough money. And if I just had more money, I can buy stuff. But it's not a lack of money. It's a lack of production. I mean, I mean, purchasing power comes from the production of goods. It doesn't come from printing money. And the public just thinks, well, if the government prints more money and gives it to everybody, we can all buy more stuff. We can't buy more stuff. We can just buy the same stuff and pay more for it. But isn't that really what started the whole problem, is, is too much cash in circulation? Look, as I understand it, and correct me if I'm wrong, interest rates go down by one of two ways. They either go down because people have saved a lot of money and the banks have more savings available to loan out, or because the government has artificially lowered those interest rates, either by commanding them to go down or by putting more money into circulation. Sure, but isn't the- what isn't that just what the maestro, the so-called maestro, Alan Greenspan, did in the years leading up to this bubble that has just burst, sure what put more money in circulation than he should have. Sure, and we had temporarily artificially low interest rates and they created all sorts of distortions and problems in the economy if we had low interest rates because of low savings everything would have been fine but because we had them artificially we had these bubbles we had all the malinvestments that were the markets are now trying to liquidate so the reason we have a bust is because the government created a phony boom is the is the the statement that i just articulated lou which is an effort to summarize some aspect of what we call Austrian economics. Is that statement, interest rates go down either because we have done the prudent thing and saved more money, or because the government has artificially reduced them by commanding them to go down or by flooding the market uh, with cash. Is that that statement an essential, is that statement an essential component of Austrian economics? And if it is, why doesn't the government understand that? Well, the government does understand it, but the government is in the position of the thief. I mean, he may not think that, you know, it's a good thing for everybody else to do it. He may not think it's even good in the long term for himself. But right now he wants the dough. He wants your, to break into your house and get your stuff. That's the, that's the moral level the government is, uh, is, uh, is working on. At some point. Right, and so if interest rates go down because of savings, they're savings to use for production. If interest rates go down because of the phony method, the Federal Reserve method, there are no real savings. And so, therefore, the projects, as Peter says, when the bubble bursts, the projects that were started wrongly during the boom can't be finished, whether it's uh, that's center the point. in Las Vegas, that, billion and one other example. That's the point that I wanted to make. The, the, when, the, when interest rates go down because the government has artificially flooded the market with cash. By definition, this cannot yes. last. Yes, and the, the interesting thing is, if you see one of uh, Bernack Obama, I mean, Bernanke's recent speeches, he's saying that you we... you call him Bernanke <laughs> Obama? Ah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> the same. They're all the same now. There's no independence. But Ben Bernanke, he's actually talking about the need to try to have some government agency or some super regulator to try to smooth out the booms and busts, to make sure that we don't have this big business cycle 
without acknowledging the fact that the only reason we have it is because of his agency. I mean, the Fed is crazy. So we need another agency to undo the damage of the Fed? Unless this, <laughs> unless this czar is God the Father who can change the laws of nature, what could the czar possibly do? Well, get rid of the Fed. You know, I mean, the Fed is what's doing it. But again, we just can't get rid of the Fed and, and turn over the printing presses to Congress. We've got to go back to a constitutional monetary system where money has real value. You know, the, the Chinese now are talking about uh, trying to move away from a dollar based international monetary system. They're talking about now maybe using special drawing rights from the IMF, which is a, a currency that they issue, which is backed by a basket of currencies. But, you know, that's a step in the right direction, but it still is, is, is missing the point that currency has to be backed by something. To back one fiat currency with another fiat currency is tantamount to having no backing at all. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the only reason that the dollar is the reserve currency is because the dollar was backed by gold. If it wasn't backed by gold, it never would have been the reserve currency. All right, so uh, is, is there anything we can do other than hope or expect that a, a minority of 40 or 41 senators will filibuster and block this stuff? Because as lucid as your explanations have been, and as loud as my efforts to explain the Constitution have been, they don't fall on all deaf ears because we have millions of listeners at, at the various Fox outlets and, and Mises and the wonderful places from which you speak as well. It does resonate with people, but it doesn't seem to be resonating with the people who write the laws. Well, again, all they're looking at is their own reelection. And, and, and what they know is that the way you get elected is you, you try to push off the pain and try to tell the public that the solution is to reelect you, that you have a lot of problems, but vote for me and I'll solve them. And they're snake oil peddlers, but, you know, they're going to keep selling it until we until we get rid of them. Uh, Lou Rockwell, are you still with us? Yes, sir. Um, I'm going to ask you kind of a personal question, even though there's millions of people listening. <laughs> I've been championing the Constitution since I was a teenager, and sometimes I feel like I'm shoveling against the tide. But there's been a little uptick in emails. Glenn Beck has reported them, Shepard Smith has reported them, and I see them, that maybe the arguments that you and Peter and Ron Paul and I have been making are starting to connect with some people. Is this wishful thinking on my part, or are we about to see darker days before we see brighter ones? Judge, I think you're exactly right. I see it, especially among young people in this country. But among people I encounter in daily life are far more aware of the fact that government is just printing up money. They, they may not understand the economics of it, but they, they, they feel there's something wrong with that. And they just think, I think people who think about it think just multiplying paper dollars is not, is not the path to social wealth or social prosperity in any Sure, way. and it's preventing us from addressing the real uh, root causes of the imbalances and is preventing us from from rebuilding a viable economy. The longer we postpone these changes, you know, the longer we postpone uh, the, the reemergence of our industrial base, of our manufacturing sector, and all we're doing right now is depriving the economy of the capital necessary to do that. P uh, uh, Lou, uh, why do we call this free market common sense explanation of of money and capital the austrian school and why is it that nobody seems to study or learn about the austrian school in colleges today well i think in fact far more people are learning about it we see just a vast increase in interest in whether people engage in financial markets or students and teachers and it's called the austrian school because this is the purest form of free market economics and the most hard money school we understand that that you can't you know that just printing up paper dollars is a social negative an economic negative and it's uh, it's a very bad thing we have to have uh, the sort of money that uh, either through competitive currencies as if I Hayek uh, advocated or through a gold standard as we, as we used to have and I think we could have a better gold standard today than we used to have um, that we have to we cannot allow an institution like the Federal Reserve, the ability just to create money out of thin air, and it will, that it causes recessions and depressions. Mm -hmm. It causes actually all of society to yeah. retard, to go back. Yeah. The, the main reason, let me just answer. Deadly, the, deadly thing. Oh, the main reason it's so unpopular, the Austrians, is because the government doesn't like it. So no economist that follows the Austrian school is going to get appointed to a high government position. And so they're not going to recognize it because the government wants economists that say the solution is more government. And so they want a Keynesianist, they want a monetarist, because they can always come up with a government program wait, 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 to solve do, a problem. Do you mean that you're never going to be the Secretary of the Treasury? 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or I'm never going to be Rock an Rock economic Rock. Lou Rockwell's never going to be the head of the Federal Reserve Board? No, I mean, they, they want people to justify.